Hi everyone and welcome to the video. This video is just intended to give you a brief overview of WordPress, uh, how to use it and just to help you get started as it can be a little bit overwhelming if you've never used it before. So I've got myself uh, just a default installation here using the default WordPress theme 2020. Um, and again, it is going to be just a quite a short video just to give you a brief overview and help get you started. So first things first, this is my website. Um, at the moment, my homepage shows blog posts. That's to be expected off a default install. I will show you how to change that, but that's not something you need to worry about too much at the moment. First things first, we need to get into our admin area. So if you go to your domain name forward slash WP hyphen admin by default, again, plugins can change that, but by default, that's what it will be. And we're just going to um, use our username and password that we set during installation just to log in here. So once you're logged into your admin area, this is what you're going to see. Um, you've got a few, any numbers next to anything on the navigation. It just means there's something new that you haven't seen before. And I'll give you a quick overview of this uh, installation of this admin page, just so we can um, we can move on. I'm not going to go into it too detailed at this point. I'm going to go through how to add a page and things a bit later. So we'll cover it in depth later. But basically, you've got the dashboard, which is just an overview. Posts is where you add new blog posts. Uh, media is where you add new images and videos and things like that to your website. Pages is where you add new pages. So if you wanted to add like an about us page, for example, you'd add it under pages. Comments is where uh, someone's commented on a page on your website or a blog post. Most people don't really use them all that often if you're just using a static website. Appearance is where you change things like your themes um, and anything sort of the look and feel of your website. This menu here might change depending on the theme you're using too. Um, plugins is just where you go and have a look at your plugins. So I'm going to add a contact form later on just to show you an example of that. Uh, so the plugins are where you add functionality, but right off the bat, you won't need to worry too much about that. Users is where you manage your WordPress users. So at the moment I'm logged in as the admin. Uh, I could go in there and add a new user if I wanted to. If you want to give logins to other people and restrict access and things like that, you can do it in there. Tools, uh, you won't need to worry too much about at the moment, but that's things like the import tool, export tool, site, site health. You might find as you add more plugins and things, the more options become available here. And settings is just your general WordPress settings. One thing that's worth noting is that this is a default install. As you start adding plugins, new themes, all that sort of thing, there's going to be additional entries here, um, which you'll actually see when I add a new plugin. You'll see that it adds a new menu item. So, like I say, off, right off the bat, that is it. It's not too complicated. And we'll, we'll move on to the next, uh, next thing now, which is how to actually change your theme. Okay, now we've talked about uh, the admin area a little bit, I'm going to go on to the first major topic, which is uh, your theme. Now, the theme you use is going to dictate a lot about your website. So many of them come with different functionality, different uh, ways of doing things. And like I say, this, this video is kind of a, a getting started and everything I show you might differ very slightly depending on your theme. This admin area is always generally going to look the same, um, but the themes, different themes give you different options. They'll add different icons and things to this menu. They'll give you different uh, options in the appearance tab. So like I say, uh, the theme is quite an important part of it. And the great thing about WordPress is you can change it at any time. If you get a bit bored or you don't like it or you, or you find one you prefer, you can generally speaking just change a the theme without doing making too many sort of changes to your website, which is great. So at the moment, my website is just using the default WordPress theme. If we go into appearance and themes, now we can see here. So if we want to add a new theme, all we go is add new. Now there's two ways of adding themes. We can add them directly through the dashboard and we'll get a list here. You can search for them. All these are going to be free to install. Um, that's great. Only thing that with these is some of them, um, only free theme, uh, generally speaking, they might be um, a preview of a premium theme um, or they might be themes that haven't been updated for a long time. So you can be a little bit conscious about that. Probably generally speaking, recommend just 
doing a quick search of the uh, the theme name on Google um, before you install any, just to check that they're still sort of active. Um, premium themes, as the name implies, you have to pay for them. And generally they're not too expensive. Uh, you can get very expensive ones if they come with a load of features that you, you, you might need. Um, so like some of the e-commerce ones can be quite expensive, for example. But if we, uh, if we wanna upload our own theme, you can click on that. And generally when you buy a premium theme, you'll get a zip file and then you just upload it here. But we just wanna use a free one for now. And I would tend to recommend if you've just got a small website, try out some of the free ones. You might find something you like and hey, it's free. So if we wanna test one out, uh, we'll just do this journey one. So details and preview, give it a preview. And it will give you a quick preview in this right hand pane and quickly just tell you a little bit more about the theme there. So here we go. And as we can see here, um, some of the archives and things, um, old dated, it doesn't necessarily mean um, the theme's out of date, but something to be noted, worth noting, if the theme hasn't been outdated for years and years, I probably personally wouldn't use them just because it probably means it's been abandoned, there might not be much support for it. And by the time you've sort of got really far down the line and really enjoying it, and then you find something doesn't work, you might not be able to get it resolved. But, you know, I mean, it's all personal preference. Generally speaking, outdated themes aren't necessarily an issue. So we'll just install that. So I'm going to click install. And they normally take about 30 seconds to a minute. Usually, obviously, depends on the size of the theme. But what we can do... Oh, that's installed. That didn't take too long at all. So that's installed. Let's go and activate it from the actual main uh, menu so I can show you that. So again, under appearance and themes, and we can see that one is there and it's not currently active. That's my active theme there and it'll just have the little active banner. Now, one thing that's noting, I'm guessing when I activate this, it's gonna change some of the appearance menu. Let's have a look. Yeah, there's a couple more um, a couple more options. And that, what you'll tend to find is where there's different sections of the theme that can be um, updated or changed, they'll probably just get added in there. So if we just refresh my main website now, we can see that's using a new theme. There we go. So again, not much content to really see it, but that's how you change your theme. Again, a lot of the a lot of the, a lot of the way the look and feel of it will be changed in this appearance section now. Um, so I'm not going to go too much into detail with that, but that's how you change a theme. Really worth noting. And um, what we're going to look at next is uh, just going to show you quickly uh, how to change so your home page doesn't show your blog uh, so that shows an actual page because that's something that caught me out quite a lot when I first started. Okay so as we showed in the last video about themes I'm just going to quickly show you now how to just make it so that your home page doesn't display your blog page. So if we go into settings and reading um, we can your home page displays your latest post or a static page. So here we go, sample page. And there actually isn't a post page at the moment. So what we would need to do is make ourselves a blog page um, that we could have for our blog. If you want blog, you don't have to use a blog. Um, if you just leave it as select, you won't have um, any blog page. So if we refresh that, Uh, it's just going to show our sample page that we had there and you can see there's no way of actually getting to our blog post there So I've got no blog at the moment, which is fine. Now on that note, let's move on to the next topic, which is how to add a new page So here you've got pages all pages So if we just click on pages probably the easiest And we can see here we've got our sample page which we already have seen and um, is that now our front page at the moment then we've got a draft privacy policy that just comes as default. I'm not going to worry too much about that. To add a new page, just click add new. Now, again, this is going to be very, this is going to vary depending on your theme. Um, some of them come with a different way of adding content to a page. Um, some of them come with drag and drop. At the moment, this is just default. The, the process of adding a page is the same, it's just how you add content. So for the default, it's just your page title and then you can you build the page. And by default, we're just going you know, to 
the WordPress uses blocks, so we could add a paragraph. Oh, that's probably not a good example. Add an image because it would give me an option. Then we could add uh, a quote. Uh, if we wanted to add some uh columns or anything we could go down and there's all this i'm not going to go into this into too much detail because that would probably be its own video really um but if we go to like layout elements for example we could add a columns um and so we wanted to have a three wide one and then we can add content regardless i'd say this process might differ very, differ slightly on uh, whether you're using different themes or not so anyway now we've got our page kind of half made if we come over to document here we've got status and status and visibility so you can make a, a page you can have it private and um, so if you added a new user they'd be able to see it or you can have it password protected or you can have it public so we're gonna leave it public and we want to publish immediately but again you could choose your options if you wanted to have a page that um, published on a certain day you could set it there I just want to add a new page for now again I'm not going to go into too much details here um, again you might see different options depending on your theme too so if we click publish on that you could always preview it as well if you wanted to see uh what it looked like before making it live so now if we go back onto our main website f5 and we might actually find it's not added yet it has added now okay so my new page and there we go we got a new page uh, not too much content on it for now, but that's fine. And that's how we add a new page. So if we wanted now, what we could do, if we wanted to have a blog, and as we were on that topic, just go back to the main WordPress dashboard. That's the new page. There's one thing that's just worth noting. You could do a quick edit on here. Um, so you could have it so you don't allow um, allow comments by default it'd be off for a page but you could have it so people could leave comments if you wanted and um, you can have parent pages so this is how you create subfolders um, if you had a sample page as a parent if we just quickly go back here and now when we hover over sample page it'll be a it'll be a drop down from there so that's how you do that as well always worth noting and there's a few other things in there so order would be where it appears on the menu but i'll cover that slightly in a bit more detail in a minute just because that's a bit more uh, in depth and it's just easier to set up a, a sample a, a, a new menu and template again you can um that that's that'll be to do with uh, the template and your theme as well so we're gonna update that there's not really too much more than that and if we do did want to have a blog we would just add a new page call it blog not add any content to it publish that and then what we would just do is go back into that setting section and we would just have post page blog save changes so that's just how you if you wanted to get your um your blog post on there we go so if we go to blog now There we go. We've got our um, we've got our posts back now. So that's how you set up a blog too, if you want it. And the next one I'm going to talk about is actually how to add a blog post. Okay, this section will be nice and quick. Just how to add a blog post. Very similar to adding a new page, but we just go to posts and the admin area. It's going to be very very similar. And we can see that hello world post there which is just that there so if you want to add a new one add new and i'm not going to go through the, the the content again because it's exactly the same uh, pretty much as adding a page um, you can add all of that uh, you can do the publish immediately uh, anyway and then we're just going to go back right, let's just add a new post anyway So we're just going to publish that. You could set it so um, you could pen, have it pending review. So again, if you had um, multiple users um, using the website, you could have you could post it, publish it, um, have it submit for review, and then another user would sub would then approve that post or not. So if you've got multiple users, it's quite useful. But I'm not going to go through all the options there. So if we just refresh the blog now. We should 
yeah see the new post and that's all there is to it for adding a new post nice and easy so i'll move on to the next topic which is going to be uh, how to change that navigation and um, we talked about changing the navigation at the top so that's what i'm going to go through okay uh, we're just going to have a look now at how we actually change the navigation uh, and this should generally work across all themes and so just the order of it and what actually displays now since the last cut i have just added a couple of pages so i added contact us and about us just so we could show this off a little bit easier so we go into our admin area and uh, we can see all our pages here and at the moment um what, what is worth noticing is my new page is currently a parent uh, the currently the parent is sample page and what that means is that if i uh hover over sample page you're going to see that as a drop down now you can't change that with the menus and uh, so if you want that to be sort of on the top level what you can do is just have that to the main page and we can actually add sub pages um or the drop down menus using the menus so it's sometimes it's better just to have everything in that top and then worry about it after so if we go to uh, appearance here and go to menus So this is what we're going to see right off the bat is that there's no custom menus here, but that's just going to pre-populate with the pages so we can see all of them here. So I'm just going to call this uh, something a bit recognizable because you might want to create um, more menus in the future. So you can have multiple if you'd like. So as we can see, uh, we've got some page blog about us contact us. So if we drop down and uh, you can see the navigation label, so that will be actually what displays in that uh, in the navigation. And if we want to change the order, so at the moment um, we've got about us and contact us and blog, but we could change that. So we put that just drag and drop it to the top. Uh, if we create this menu for now, so I can sort of show you it live. And once you've created it, you get a couple more options. So we can automatically add new top level pages to this menu. So that means if you add a new page, they'll automatically add it to the navigation. Otherwise, what you might find is you add a new page and it doesn't add to your navigation. So if we click that and display location primary menu. So that is the, the main navigation bar of my uh, website. Now that again might differ slightly depending on your theme, but it's generally going to be sort of similar. Okay, there we go. So we've saved that. Now we can start making a few changes. So if we just get the most up to date version by refreshing that page, we can we see we've got sample page, contact us, blog about us, my new page. But I might want to move my new page to here in between sample page and contact us. And all I would do that is pop that in there, save that. refresh and there you go you can just see the navigation has changed there now if we wanted to just add the drop down all we would do is just add that as a slight indent under the page you want it to drop down so if we want to put it on contact us for example we'll just pop it in there save that there you go i think that's saved refresh our page and there you can see you've got the drop down for that as well. So that's just the way of editing your navigation. Um, I just find it's the easiest way of managing it. You can do it to an extent just from the pages menu, but I tend to find it's much easier just using it as a menu. And there's only one more topic I wanted to cover, which is how to install and use plugins. So that's going to be the next topic and the final one. So plugins, really powerful. Um, you can get plugins that basically do anything. Uh, ultimately, they just add functionality to your website. So in this example, I'm just going to add a really simple contact form plugin to my website, just to give you an example. But there are loads. Again, you've got free, you've got premium ones. Um, it's always a good idea to try the, uh, the free ones first. One thing I would say about this, though, is it's a good idea to try and use plugins that are updated regularly or certainly aren't abandoned and um, they tend to have security flaws if they uh, aren't 
if they never uh, sort of updated and they can be a source of vulnerability for your website so always make sure you keep them up to date and try and use ones that are actually kept up to date as well uh, just because by their nature and um, they can present a security flaw but anyway <laughs> moving on uh, go into the plugin section and this is these are just the default ones that were um, uh, installed with it we want to add a new one so I'm going to click on add new and again same as themes we can search here for anything that we want um, install of the all of these uh, or if we've got a premium one from another website you would just upload the zip file into that bit there uh, browse there and upload it from there but I'm just going to use uh, I just want a contact form and because my theme doesn't come with one I'm going to have one uh, I'm just going to add one here so contact form 7 I know is a very popular one um, and again last updated um, one week ago it's not something you see with the themes but the the plugins are a little bit more important for making sure they're kept up to date so uh, there we go this one is what was that last updated we go um, a lot of active installations those sorts of things are a good indication that it's uh, probably safe to, to use so I'm just going to go ahead and install contact form 7 and what you'll see once this has actually activated is it adds another section to here um, so I've installed it you've got to activate it before you can actually use it It just sometimes takes a couple of seconds there we go and you can see it's added this contact here um, I'm not going to go into the details of this particular plugin because uh, you probably won't end up using it but you know uh, once you've actually activated it in your installed plugin sections you can see the settings for it um, and you can see a few more details so if you need to know how to use it for example that would normally be here under view details but if we go to settings for this contact form now this particular one shows the short something called a short code so if i wanted to enter this into a page i would use this short code and for this one um that's the idea if i click on that i can edit it but again it doesn't it's really irrelevant for now because unless you're using this particular plugin you don't really care so copy the short code a lot of plugins use this short code and if we go into all pages go to our contact us Not all plugins will work like this. Some of them, um, some of them, you don't need to do anything. They just work in the background. But this particular one, we actually just need to add the shortcode in. So if we add it in there, take that, and if we just go to that page now, I'm hoping that that's going to be in there. Yeah, there you go. So that's added the contact us form. As you can see really easy um, a lot of them work on this short code the short code being the the, the content in these sort of squared off brackets um, each one's going to be different to what you actually what you put in there but that's plug it like as you can see there i've just added a really easy to use contact form i had loads of other options if i wanted to use a different one that's what makes wordpress really popular um, is that there's just so many plugins and themes that you can use and it is really quite simple to use but that's the end of this video i think hopefully i've given you enough that you can actually get started with your new project um, and feel a bit more comfortable in what you're doing I mean, you could talk about WordPress for days um, about everything it can do. But like I say, this was just designed to be a sort of a, a little a short, shortish video of just getting started. And it's just things that caught me out when I first started. So hopefully it was helpful. But that's the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Goodbye for now.